In recent years, Landline's brought you many stories about what people believe robotics and drones can do for agriculture. Our first story today looks at remote controlled helicopters and the role some farmers believe they can play in integrated pest management. It started with strawberries and is already moving into other crops, as John Taylor reports. In the age-old struggle between farmers and pests, there's a new weapon. You might call it a drone, or even a toy, but aviation types prefer to call it an aerial vehicle, or AV for short. It's going to be the only way that the beneficial bugs are going to be dispensed in the future. It's the latest addition to the arsenal of biological pest control, using drones to spread good predatory insects over farmland so they can kill bad insects that would otherwise eat the crops. Which could take the use of predatory insects from a labour intensive and expensive niche market to the mainstream. And that's been a real hurdle for us because we, we get these great bio control agents and we get them out to our growers and then they often find that it's a bit laborious, you know. For farmers, it promises an easy alternative or option to using chemicals. All your insects and all your stuff there, they can adapt quickly and get resistance to chemicals, but they can't get resistance from some little critter eating them. <laughs> you know? Quality is everything at this strawberry operation at Belmere, north of Brisbane. Taste and See, a joint venture between two families, has about two and a half million plants producing strawberries. Years ago we were big but a lot more bigger players come to the strawberry industry over the last four or five years in southeast Queensland. The season's winding down now, but there are no shortcuts, even though things move fast. The fruit packed here can be on a shelf in Coles in Melbourne in less than three days. Any problems can be instantly traced to the particular packer, field, row and person who picked it. But nice lush plants with fruit aren't just attractive to people. So what eats strawberries, Murph? Ducks, <laughs> crows, hares, everything, everything eats strawberries. But this is what we use for the ducks, this strobe light here. So it's a random light that comes on through the night. And then of course there are insects that can damage and ultimately kill the plants. Well, uh, especially Heliothus, cluster caterpillar early in the season, but one of our biggest things that we struggle with is two-spotted mite. Two-spotted mite are very hard to kill when they get established in the crop and they do a heap of damage. And what are the ways that you can deal with the mite? Well, you can use chemicals, which is a harsh way. You've got to use pretty hard chemicals and we try to refrain from that. So probably 15, 18 years ago, we started introducing predatory mites. The small town of Mundubra in country Queensland is home to an insectary where entomologist Dan Papacek and his staff from the aptly named Bugs for Bugs rear predatory insects. Native species or well and truly naturalised. If you have a look in this tray here, you'll see what we've got. <laughs> look at that. That's beautiful, isn't it? So these are just fly larvae or maggots, if you like. Uh -huh. There's a bit of sand that they're in there. And we'll harvest those today and then allow them to pupate. The truth is that all pests have natural enemies and, um, and that's just part of nature. You know, we, uh, we find that uh, things are kept in check by natural means. And our goal is to try to improve the growers' opportunities to use as natural means as possible to manage their pest problems. In order to rear good insects, they first have to breed the pests. In this case, flies in order to breed wasps that will go on to kill flies on farms. And so these are uh, used for producing a little parasitic wasp that we can release. Places like piggeries, chicken farms, intensive livestock industries. Well, you've got a lot of manure and then you get a lot of flies. The parasitic wasps kill flies by breaking their life cycle. The wasps lay an egg in fly pupa and inside it feeds on the fly before emerging. Then the wasp will go on and breed 
and lay an egg in another pupa and so continue the cycle. That doesn't mean that we're anti-pesticide, far from it. We see our biocontrol agents, however, as reducing the dependency on pesticides, which means that some of those products will last longer and we'll have less issues with resistance, with residues, with uh, all the sort of negative aspects of using pesticides. Are you creating the next cane toad for Australia? <laughs> yeah, look, that's, a, that's pretty much a question I'll learn to expect. And I guess the cane toad uh, for us is something of a hair shirt, but the truth is that um, it's really quite irrelevant with what we're talking, we're talking about here. Uh, cane toads are vertebrates. Um, they belong with foxes, cats, rabbits, all sorts of things that should never ever have been brought into this country. The biocontrol agents we produce here are extremely specialised, very tiny, and they're uniquely adapted to the life cycle of their host, so that if the host isn't present, they'll actually perish. They're that adapted, right? After years of using beneficial insects on his own crops, one man had an idea. So in the past 18 months, Nathan Roy from the Sunshine Coast has gone from being a strawberry farmer to pest control innovator with his own company, Aerobugs. So how much work has gone into making this look so easy? <laughs> hundreds of hours. Literally hundreds of hours, eh? An idea on the farm has led to this, an eight-bladed aerial vehicle called an octocopter. It can reach speeds of more than 100 kilometres an hour. But Nathan Roy's innovative idea has been what a drone can be used for, spreading beneficial insects. And the real work has gone into developing a bag for the drone to carry and spread insects. Oh, this one was about number two or three, wasn't it, yeah, Nath? Two. This one, I actually made this with my sewing machine out of fabric I found to spotlight. <coughs> this is actually a saucer for a pot plant, which we cut the insides out of. I went to Bunnings and that's where I got all the parts from. So, um, and I, tr I trialled it with uh, rice and it dispensed the rice perfect, but it was just, it was nearly flew apart on the, on the test run, so I had to rebuild it. So. Wow. Yeah. Taking off. A lot of patents and proprietary secrets later, can do country people have a machine, but no farm. Why'd you get out of strawberry farming? Oh, there's uh, a lot of strawberries growing in Australia, and we're actually a small farm compared to uh, other farms, so it wasn't commercially viable to uh, continue to farm strawberries. Just the margins too tight? Yes. So continually having to streamline, and one of the ways for streamlining was to spread beneficial insects with the UAV instead of using workers to do it. Has it been easier or harder than you thought it would be? No, it's been quite difficult. The, the hard part is getting, getting all the, the licensing together. That's been probably the hardest part of all. So we've, we started our licensing um, May last year um, and it wasn't until uh, June this year that we were able to have our license approved from CASA. This year, Nathan and his colleague Glenn began trialling their work on Merv Shifke's farm. He said, oh, we could put these things out with the drone. So we said, yeah, we'll give it a go. So this year we started with them putting them out with the drone. So what did you have here, Nathan? Uh, this is the vermiculite. This is what we use for the, uh, the medium to spread the bugs with. And why do you use this? Uh, it's a great light material. For, uh, so the bugs can attach, they crawl all over it, and when you dispense, they, uh, they sort of use that as a, a, a way of getting from the, the craft to the ground. So they just crawl all over the um, vermiculite everywhere. 
The next thing is to add the predatory insects. That's the uh, the insects that we get from the insect tree. So that's persimilis there. And how many are in there? Approximate 50,000. Wow. So that's enough for one hectare. And they're all alive as you can see them moving. You can see them crawling around the, uh, the edge. So you have to keep giving them a bit of a tap to try and keep them down. The bag has a spreader at its base, which throws out a measured dose of insects and vermiculite as it flies. Safety arm off. Arming. Taking off. Key to success has been finding the Goldilocks spot in the sky, how high the AV should work above the crops. Too high and not enough bugs get where they need to be. Too low and there's too many. There's also time of day, humidity, wind, power lines and interested people. And typical pickers. They'll always stop and stand in one spot when, they're, when they see it. So we try and clear the area beforehand, but you'll often get the silly one that'll walk across the paddock because he wants a closer look. The history of Australian farming is one of constant innovation, constantly seeking to do things better, cheaper and easier. To spread beneficial insects over this field by hand would take a number of people hours, yet with an unmanned aerial vehicle, just minutes. On the ground, as he manages his strawberry farm, the farmer, Merv Shifke, sees plenty of potential. Oh, yeah, it'd be better for everybody. Less miles on our legs. <laughs> no, but, yeah, no, no. It, it's just a, a more economical way and probably a, a better way of putting them out. You can get a good even spread of, of your predatory insects. We're helping uh, the Australian farming community reduce their dependence on pesticides, and that's got to be a good thing. There's uh, a lot of farms around the place that will say that it does work. And how big are your dreams? Uh, pretty big. John Taylor reporting.